Hello and blessings, my beautiful souls. How are you today? Rockpool Publishing has kindly sent me out this beautiful deck for me to unbox. I have another one that was sent out as well, which I'll unbox soon, but I felt like starting with this one because it just really called to me. The aesthetic of this deck is so very beautiful. There is such a harmonious energy coming from it. It's got a really beautiful, feminine, light, harmonious energy. Very crystalline, very moon vibe, if you know what I mean. It's an aesthetic that I'm quite drawn to, but I'm hoping that the, uh, the cards reflect well. From what I can see on the back here is that there is some really beautiful imaging happening and so I'm excited to unbox it. Let us begin with Astral Realms Crystal Oracle by Dark Moon Crystals and Prism and Fleur Design Studio. I have not heard of either of those brands personally, so I'm curious to see what magic they bring forth in the form of this beautiful Oracle deck. And I'm a big fan of Rockpool for the decks that they have been bringing out of late, particularly Sherilyn Darcy's decks, which I absolutely love and adore, and Fiona Horn's Magic of You Oracle as well. I purchased another deck of theirs very recently. Look at me go with my knife. I was all ready and prepared. I purchased this one and I'll show it to you now this one here I picked it up oh, upside down but I picked it up the other day <laughs> so we'll look at that one a little closely later on right so the box feels really luxe there is spot glossing which I really appreciate I like my package to be I don't know something special and so this one feels nice it's got a nice matte finish Really beautiful edge design there, which is also spot gloss as well. The moon, the crystal, sort of the archway, the crystal in the center, all spot gloss. So nice for it. Ooh, really beautiful internal color, despite myself, folks. This is actually one of my favorite colors, like this burnt orange vibe. I don't know why, but it is, and I'm drawn to it. And I have a lot of clothing that mirrors this color. So really pretty. Okay, look at the sides. Attention to detail has been paid here. All right, let's start off with the book. We have here a very nice aesthetic, mirrors the cover nicely. It looks chunky. Oh, that's a nice image. It does not look foiled. Oh, about the illustrator. Fantastic, this is Paige McLeod. And then here we have the author, Dark Moon Crystals, created by Lee Showman. So very nice. We have the names. Again, what number of page do we have? 119. Activation and guidance. Oh, so we've got a nice color representation, but it is not gloss, which is nice. Spirit chords. Mm. I love that. I'm interested in seeing what type of crystals they use. Looks like a combination here of Apothelite and Jasper, which is really interesting. I'm actually really liking the vibe. Beautiful aesthetic, really lovely layout. And so let's start from the beginning because I kind of went in from the back there. We've got a nice table of contents there. Everything looks as usual. We have your intro we have the chakra system so they are working with the concept of the Hindu chakra system and then we have information pertaining to the Hindu chakra system which looks really interesting how to use the cards three card spread single pull five card guidance spread interesting and then the cards that's pretty isn't it so we move into it. So it looks like we have the card and the type of crystal and the chakra that it relates to, which is all very interesting, isn't it? I quite like that. All right, enough of the book. We have the usual you know, digital oracle information here. So app and stuffs, plastic cup. 
We all know how I feel about plastic cuffs. Please go to paper. Please, please, please. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is really, really nice. Is <laughs> that is slick? That is nice. Relatively good cardstock. Stand up in a good shuffle. All right, here we go. We have transcendence, and then we have the crown chakra here. We have consciousness with the third eye chakra. We have expression with the throat chakra. Intention, heart chakra. Shatki, solar plex chakra. And then tangerine quartz on the other side. We have deep knowing. Sacral Chakra, Sunstone, that's beautiful. Culmination, Root Chakra, Hematite, ooh, that's nice. Intuition, Water Element, Aquamarine, so there's information all over the page. <laughs> and by page I mean card here. Eudaimonia. Uranus and Malachite. Malachite's such an interesting stone. It never really calls to me. Do you have those crystals that just you see around? They're very common, they're very popular, etc. And yet they just they do nothing for you. Malachite is one of those stones. I have pieces of malachite in my collection because I like to collect, but don't really work with it so if you work with malachite let me know what it is that you gain from your work with malachite I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on that we have initiation here the fire element and we have aragonite I find that stone so interesting then we have here regeneration, Pluto, black tourmaline, which I am super down with. Anyone that knows me and knows me well knows that I'm a big fan of tourmaline. I always have it in my sacred space. I love it. It is my primary neutralizing stone. Do you have such a stone that helps you to ground and center, eradicate ill intentions, remove negative energy, and really rebalance the space with that solid like hit? I find that it's a real heavy hitter for me. That is why I like to use it because I tend to do a lot of heavier spirit work and sometimes I need that heavy hitter on my side. So what stone does that for you? What's your preferred clearing stone? I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on that. Perseverance, earth element, and turquoise. Oh, that is so pretty. That is really pretty, isn't it? I would like to see more color, more vibrancy coming from the stone itself. So perhaps a sharper image of the stone would be preferred. That's just my own personal, you know, critiquing here. Like this one here has a luminescence, but it's, it almost fades in comparison to, you know, the other digital arrangements here, the butterfly and the greenery there, which I think is very, very beautiful. And what does this one say? We have transition, we have moon, we have calcite there. Then we have empathy, Venus and rose quartz. Oh, this is beautiful. Very Venus Aphrodite energy here, which I'm loving because I'm currently working with her at the moment in so many different capacities. <laughs> so this one's beautiful. And then we have introspection here, and that is Asterion <laughs> and Fluorite. Sorry, my hair keeps hitting the microphone. Apologies, folks. Apologies. And then we have Divine Love. And that is Soul Star Chakra and Pink Amethyst. So that's really, really pretty. I'm feeling that one quite a bit. And we move to Abundance, uh, Regular Star, Smoky Amazonite. Ooh, I love the sound of a smoky Amazonite. Yes, please. 
we have clarity and sun citrine citrine is one of those stones that you have to be very careful with folks because there is a lot of fake citrine out there and many many people buy own and use pieces of fake citrine citrine is actually harder to come by in its pure natural form than you might imagine and please source your crystals ethically but keep an eye out for you know the real deal there's something special about working with citrine and you can get a lot out of it if you hang out or hold out for that true and genuine peace we have here insight and this is universal chakra and peach selenite which i love oh my gosh i'm gonna go on a tangent i can feel myself going on a tangent here i love peach selenite so much my beautiful friend krishna priya sent me a piece uh, like an obelisk size almost like a wand almost like a big version of this but more obelisk shaped and i simply hold it and run it up and down from my crown all the way through to my feet and i can physically feel the energy of that stone in such a tangible way it is the only stone that lifts my spirits it really is the most magnificent stone i have to work with in that way so i i will go on and on about that one so i'm down with that inclusion and i'm feeling so much more positive about this deck as a result not that i was not feeling positive it's just that when they represent something that is dear to me in a deck or in any capacity really i truly genuinely appreciate that we have direction uh alicia star i'm hoping i'm pronouncing that correct and then the super seven oh, i love super seven i used to rock a pendant of super seven for quite a few years actually this is particularly um relevant for when i did my reiki one and two uh, and I lived in the Northern Territory. I went with a friend of mine to this beautiful little crystal shop in Darwin and I picked up this pendant, this Super 7 pendant. And I actually sent one to my grandfather prior to him passing away because he discovered the magic of crystals and he called me to have a conversation with me about that. And he asked me if I could find him a really beautiful, powerful stone. And he mentioned the Super 7 and he wanted a stone and a little cage you know those little cages so i got him one and he was wearing a super seven um the day that he passed away so that's a very special and nostalgic stone for me we have here boundaries and we have south node so we've got a little astrology coming in there and that is labradorite or laboradite depending on how you like to pronounce it the stone of scorpio the temple of stars I'm down with it. It is beautiful. This is a beautiful representation. Then we have Perspective and Neptune and Larimar. I have pieces of Larimar. And it is an interesting stone to work with. It truly is. I haven't really tested its limits, so I can't say more about it. But I know that it has a lovely energy. A very peculiar one at that. I think if you are one of those people that really resonates with um, Lumeria or Atlantis or any one of those two beautiful mythologies or mythological places, then you may like it. Then we have Adaptability, Air Element and Lace Agate. I have some crazy Lace Agate. My puppy wants to get out, and so I'm going to let him out. Let me pause for a moment. Okay, back again. Sorry for that interruption. We have Momentum, Mars, and Pyrite, which is the fool's gold, a good prosperity stone. Then we have Conviction, the Edamine Star, and Red Jasper. That's interesting. That's a nice piece of red jasper. I wonder where they got their specimens from. <laughs> Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Curiosity, Jupiter, and Apotholite. Yeah, interesting. It's lovely. Expansion, North Node, Opal. Oh. Australia is quite known for its opals. I used to have a beautiful piece of opal that my father gave to me when I was a little, little girl. 
Cognizance, Mercury and Emerald. Emerald is the birthstone for Taurus. So I am down with a little emerald and I rather like the color emerald as a wearable color. I'm very attracted to green. We have alignment, Earth Star Chakra and Herkimer Diamond. <laughs> My puppy has a puppy visitor, so if you can hear a little rustling in the background, that's the dogs playing. Then we have Discipline, Saturn, and Azurite. Oh, I like Azurite. Very interesting stone. And then we have Trust, Pallas, and Ammonite which is the beautiful fossilized shell. We have Resolve, Vesta, and Desert Jasper. Very lovely. And then we have Healing, Chiron, and the Wounded Healer, and Spirit Quartz, which I think is absolutely lovely. So what did you think, beautiful souls? Having a look at all of these beautiful cards, what did you think? Did you enjoy the inclusion of gems? There are quite a few crystal oracles out there, but very few catch my eye because I don't enjoy necessarily the choices of crystals. I found there to be such a beautiful aesthetic to this deck and I can honestly see myself using it. It is beautiful to look at. It feels, it feels lovely. It truly feels quite beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick and lazy shuffle. And then I'm going to pull a little information from the guidebook to just see how it goes. Okay, so this can be for you. So if you set a nice intention, close your eyes, ground and center, I will do the same and see what crystal, what wisdom, which card comes out. Again, apologies for the background noise. The dogs are playing. I live on a property, folks. These are some of the things that I am forced to contend with from time to time. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to rest that there. Alignment, Earth Star Chakra and Herkimer Diamond. So let's pull that up. This is card number 29. Okay, 25, 27, 29, here we go. Herkimer Diamond, Earth Star Chakra. Universal oneness, attunement, receiving. When you are in chakral alignment, you're in tune with your body, mind and spirit. When you can activate and balance your chakras, crystalline, Bright white light flows through your entire chakra system, giving you an opportunity to go beyond your tangible earthly self and develop intuitive skills that allow you to step into your higher, authentic way of being. Hmm. Think of your earth star chakra as an energetic umbilical cord connected to you that flows straight down through Mother Earth and anchors all 12 of the chakras. Your earth star chakra lives outside your physical body in your auric field and is home to your past lives and all your karmic cycles. It is a representation of your universal oneness, meaning it connects you, your earthly energy to the universal energy we all share. When you activate your earth star chakra, you will gain a more grounded and reassured outlook dispelling stagnant negative energies and reminding you of your importance in the universal web of energy herkimer diamond are diamonds plural sorry are attunement stones that open and activate your third eye and crown chakras with this openness energy flows freely sorry with this openness energy flows freely down through to your earth star chakra herkimer diamond can heal your physical body of ailments, realigning your DNA and bodily energy to aid your ability to see your true self and look past your fears. Activation guidance. Go outside where you will be undisturbed in your connection, preferably barefoot and somewhere you can lie down directly on Mother Earth. 
close your eyes and imagine an energetic cord flowing through you down to the core of Mother Earth and your feet growing roots. Imagine these roots are the connections you have made during your earthly experience and how you can not only nourish these further to enhance your current relationship but how you can make connections with the collective. I harness Mother Earth's grounding energies and become part of the collective oneness where I am in in true alignment. Hmm, okay, okay, okay. So we're talking about the tree root meditation there. I like the information given on the Earth Star Chakra. I really like that. And, you know, I think that there could be a little bit of um, extra energy, extra information in this deck that, you know, I've forgotten about. I originally learned about Soul Star and Earth Star Chakras when I was doing my Reiki training. And that was a really, really long time ago. And since I'm not a Reiki practitioner or I don't do anything really apart from help my children <laughs> from time to time, I've forgotten a lot of that, so I appreciate any resource that helps me to reconnect with wisdom that I may have forgotten over time. We learn a lot in a lifetime, folks, and remembering it all can be a little bit tricky. But I feel that overall, this could be a really functional, beautiful personal working deck. A really beautiful soul guidance style of deck something that you can meditate on something that you can work in conjunction with especially if you are a bit of a rock hound or a crystal lover working with specific stones meditating with those stones creating magic gridding etc etc can be a really beautiful way of connecting more deeply with crystals and by working with a deck like this I think that there would be a really beautiful connection there don't you so there you have it my beautiful souls let me know in the comments what you thought of the astral realms crystal oracle by dark moon crystals and prism and fleur design studios personally i loved the aesthetic i really found the deck to be quite balanced as far as energy goes i liked the philosophy the astrology in there the chakra wisdom and philosophy that was woven in there i liked the crystal selection so i'm pretty happy with this deck as a whole and I'm going to hold on to it I feel for a very long time there you have it my beautiful souls let me know what you thought much love and many blessings take care bye